All right, everyone, we're going to get started. So if you can please mute yourselves, that would be great. And again, if you want to turn on your camera and show yourself, that's also wonderful. We love to see your faces. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to Moments of Opportunity with the SAPIO Foundry Tel Aviv. This is our concluding event. It's crazy. It's been 12 weeks in the consumer products cohort. Three months ago, we met virtually. We're meeting again virtually. What can you do? We hope everyone's staying safe, doing well, in decent spirits. We're so happy to have you here to celebrate the end of the cohort and also to really show you how our startups bring these moments of opportunity to life, how our seven startups really help consumer products companies meet and engage with consumers in these moments of opportunity. So that's what we're doing tonight. I can't wait. Uh, we're going to go through the agenda right now so you know what's up and up and coming up and let's just do that. So we're going to be talking about a results, our results driven program with Lior Weitzman. After that, a few words from Alexa Gorman on SAPIO creating the win win win. Mark Osborne will be giving a presentation on the new era in consumer products and then of course our startups that's probably one of the biggest reasons why you're here. We're going to be doing the moments of, of, of sorry, moments of opportunity with our startups with the SAPIO Foundry Tel Aviv. And so how it's going to work is we're going to hear from each startup for three minutes. We're going to ask them a question and you're going to hear from them and really how they bring this framework to life. At the end, we will take a group selfie. So don't sneak away. And if you have a glass of wine or your cappuccino in hand, it's a good time. We're all in this together, so let's just dive in. First, we're gonna hear from Lior Weitzman, who's the director of the SAPI of Andre Tel Aviv. So Lior, feel free to take it away. Thanks, Stephanie, and thank you everyone for joining tonight, this morning, wherever you are. So I want to start by just uh, really uh, in a high level introducing SAPI of Andre for those of you who do not know what we, what we do. So in a nutshell, we build the next, gener the next generation of partners for, for SAP. And we do that by running a startup program in nine different locations around the world, uh, hubs of innovation, and obviously Tel Aviv is one of them. And the program that we are concluding today was focused on solutions for the consumer product industry. So uh, three months ago, we selected seven companies, which you can see there, logo at the bottom of the slide and and because we believe that those startups bring value to the core value chain of our consumer product uh, clients so i want to show you just uh, in a very high level what we did in, in the uh, previous three months um and it will be very short because i want you to see the companies so stephanie if you can please thank you um so Roughly, we divided to the program to three uh, tracks, you can call it. On the technology track, um, we actually worked on nine different use cases of integration together with five different SAP products. And, and believe it or not, in, in a matter of a few days, all of those uh, companies that you will see today will be available uh, for our clients to consume them. Um, on the business track, we worked with one-on-one -on -one with each of the companies to you can call it a tailor-made account plan. Uh, they met throughout the program and, and worked with more than 50 SAP senior stakeholders. Uh, they actually already met 13 clients during the program, and we are, we are in the middle of a, of a work with 61 different account teams around the world, which, are, which will connect us to future clients that those companies will meet along the way. Uh, we did a lot of value creation on, on top of that. So the companies work with our 34 mentors, which are probably uh, some of them are on the call and it's a great opportunity to thank them as well. And they had more than 40 opportunities of exposure, which are PR and events and, and different type of, you know, media activities that we did um, and sales, uh, sales materials and so on. So really so much to do in three months. And just to mention, this is only the beginning of their partnerships with SAP and we will support them along the way. And you won't be surprised what is the one thing that we did the most. And I guess you won't be surprised. And it's Zoom calls. Um, 
we actually had, and I counted, 191 separated video conference calls throughout the program, which I guess are more than the amount I had in my entire life before that program. Um, but I guess you are all in a similar situation. So before moving on to the next speakers, I just want to say thank you, uh, obviously not to the full list of people who help us, and there are many, but to my colleagues and partners here in Tel Aviv, which are in Bar Kovi, who is the uh, mastermind behind this amazing program. She managed the program a lot throughout the, the, the way, and Stephanie Horowitz, who, who created so much value for our startup companies, uh, probably many things that you saw already and will see in the future, uh, and Ofer Wolf, who was a fellow in the program and support us along the way, and so many other names to, to mention, and I'm sorry uh, not naming each one, of the, each one of them because I want all the attendees to stay on the line and, and enjoy the event tonight. Thank you, Lior. That's a lot of Zoom calls. If anyone can compete with that, send me a private message. Maybe we'll have a competition. Now we're going to be hearing from the one and only Alexa Gorman. So Alexa, for those of you who don't know, is Senior Vice President and Head of SAPIO Foundries EMEA. And she'll be talking about how SAPIO creates the win-win-win. So Alexa, please feel free to take it away. Thank you, Stephanie. Can you hear me? Yes. So, um, Lior and Stephanie and Imbar asked me to spend a couple of minutes, for those of you who don't um, have the bigger picture, but I think the slide that Lior just shared is really the tangible results of what we're trying to achieve for SAP, for our customers, and for the startup ecosystem. Um, so, we recently, as a team, as a business unit, celebrated our third birthday. Um, we were originally created to um, develop the next generation of partners for SAP by building an open ecosystem of um, partner companies around SAP. So typically in the early stage startups in the Series A, Seed Series A stage. We do this um, one, on the one side through investments through the SAP IO fund. And the second side is what we call foundries, or what um, Lior also referred to as innovation hubs, where we have nine now around the world, where we try and foster and, and work with companies and make their solutions available to our customers and try and create a win-win-win um, situation, like, like Stephanie said. Um, a win for our customers, a win for the startups, and a win, of course, also um, for SAP. Um, if you look at the, start, the, the SAP customers, um, they have made large investments into SAP's product portfolio and are very happy if we can provide them with additional innovation that complements our portfolio, um, such as some of the companies that you will, or all of the companies that you will be um, seeing today. We've done a lot of due diligence upfront in terms of technology and looking at the teams. And so the customers are very happy to be meeting with these companies and trying their solutions. And especially as the companies have integrated with SAP solutions, data can flow out of the box between an SAP solution and um, a startup's solution. Um, for the startups, we open the door to our 450,000 customers, so to say, and as you've seen, um, they've started to meet with some of them. There are many more meetings I know on the calendar for the rest of the year. And again, it's the beginning of a journey together. Um, so we do a lot of go-to-market development together. We have resources to support on the integration side and bring them then onto SAP's App Center. Um, and for SAP, the win is really that we get valuable feedback on our APIs, on our platform, and are able to broaden our portfolio and really build a vibrant ecosystem. Since we started, we're currently working with over 220 startups across all lines of business and across all industries um, and really providing that innovation then again to our customers and in some cases actually using that innovation ourselves. And that's why we also partnered in Tel Aviv with SAP Labs and Orna Kleinman um, and the team to, to also foster the innovation that we have in Tel Aviv and make that available to our customers worldwide. So a big thank you to, to the hard work of all the companies that you'll see pitching today and a big thanks to the great team I'm so proud of in Tel Aviv. So that's it from my side. Thank you. Thanks, Alexa. And we really hope we can have you visit again very soon. Uh, 
And now we're going to be hearing from Mark Osborne. So Mark is Vice President of Strategy and Operations of SAP's Consumer Products Industry Business Unit. And I don't want to forget, but Mark, we need to say thank you to you because we really could not have done this without you. This program was so successful because of your support and help. So I'm saying thanks now, so I don't forget to say thanks later. So I'm going to let Mark share his screen and he's going to be talking about the new era in consumer products. Very good. Well, thank you, Stephanie, and thanks to, to you and the team as well. It's been a real pleasure working with all of you, and uh, I'm sad to see the program come to an end. Um, it's been a lot of fun. So what I thought I'd do today is just sort of set the stage for um, the rest of the discussion by talking about what's happening in the consumer products industry and why these kinds of programs and the kinds of engagements that we're having with the startups and the Tel Aviv cohort are so timely and so important for us here at SAP. And I want to just start with, with this. I'm not here to talk about COVID-19, but I do want to highlight something that I think the pandemic has made extraordinarily apparent if it hadn't been immediately apparent before. And that is that we live in a world that is now impossible to predict. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, VUCA, is the new normal and will be forever. Uh, this is a visual representation of the World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report for 2020. This is a report they publish every year that showcases their point of view on what they think are the biggest risks to the global economy in the coming year. And I bet they want to restate this model because this was published on January 15th when the pandemic was already a significant issue in Asia and certain parts of Europe. Um, and what we can see is not only did they fail to predict the, you know, the likelihood and the impact of the pandemic itself, it's that this is also a very multidimensional interrelated model. So if you shift the risk factor associated with the infectious disease over to a much higher likelihood, you'd also have to make a corresponding shift in the, in the corollary risk factors that come with it, things like financial failure, fiscal crisis, unemployment, and now emerging things that we see around food crisis and social instability and perhaps other risk factors as well. And this really rings home for us in consumer products because it means that the emphasis on efficiency and incremental improvement in an environment that's stable and can be predicted is a lot less important than being able to develop a business process and a business capability that is flexible and agile and resilient. And these are conversations that had already been taking place in consumer products, but in the environment we're in, they've accelerated those conversations. And it's driving a very different discussion for us. The first is that we're moving from the age of resources to the age of ideas. For the last 50, 75 years in consumer products, if you had the, you know, some measure of control over the source of supply, or if you had the most manufacturing capacity or the best transportation network, that created both incredible uh, you know, competitive uh, barriers to entry and also competitive advantage. Because if anyone wanted to compete with you, they'd have to make a really significant capital investment in order to be able to scale up to a point where they could compete at a comparable cost per unit. And this is not the, the environment we're in anymore. You know, all around the world today, there are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of, of pockets of highly intelligent, highly creative people who are surrounded by strong intellectual cap, uh, property protections and copyright protections and have you know, this, this cloud of services available to them where you can outsource manufacturing, you can outsource transportation, you can outsource financial services and legal services. And this gives these, these, these pockets or these, these creative people an opportunity to really focus on what's the best idea. And what differentiates them is the idea that they can bring to the market and the talent that they can cultivate to do that. And this is happening in, in an environment where we see a significant shift in consumer values. Um, this phrase, consumers are beginning to buy the change they wish to, the, to see in the world, comes from uh, some recent analysis from Nielsen where they, they clearly demonstrated that there is a strong preference among consumers who are willing to pay a premium for to brands and companies that, that give back to the environment and the communities in which they operate, that demonstrate a commitment to sustainability and to health and wellness and to quality. And that creates significant business opportunities in ways that companies perhaps hadn't considered previously. And, and it's important to note too that this is not a first world, third world phenomenon. This is a global phenomenon. Some of the strongest response rates that they saw in those surveys were coming from countries like Indonesia, the Philippines, Colombia, Mexico, India. So this is a global phenomenon and it's creating significant new opportunity in an environment also where we're seeing rapidly diminishing costs. So you think about the cost, the declining cost of, of data storage or memory or um, uh, 
IT infrastructure with the advent of cloud computing. It's made it substantially easier for companies to be able to stand up a viable business on the basis of a new set of uh, consumer values and really differentiate on the strength of their ideas and their talent. And this has driven a really fundamental shift in the industry. You know, again, I mentioned the last 50 to 75 years that the entire industry was based on this notion of moments of truth. Get a consumer into a store and get them to buy something, get them to use it at home, and then hopefully repeat that cycle. And this was based on really well understood, you know, touch points along a linear path to purchase that, that focused on a transaction for a product in which the industry players were really well defined. CP companies were CP companies and retailers were retailers and it favored economies of scale. This is not the game we're playing anymore. Today, it's all about moments of opportunity with the consumer squarely at the center, developing a much more holistic understanding of the journey that that consumer is on, the experiences and, and, and personalized engagement that you need to deliver to that consumer along that journey to help facilitate the achievement of an outcome. Consumers today don't want to buy something. They don't want to be sold to. They want to be inspired. They want to be guided. They want to be helped. And that requires thinking more broadly about the way that companies help consumers. It's not just about the product anymore or your definition of, of where you fit in that value chain. It's about the product. It's about content. It's about services. And so it's about developing an ecosystem orientation that helps meet consumers in those moments of opportunity. And it favors what we call economies of speed. Those companies that can identify those moments the fastest and reach those consumers with personalized experiences with the best cost model are going to be the ones that win. So we see a huge shift in the industry toward this, this model of moments of opportunity, and this is happening everywhere. So uh, significant amounts of innovation are coming into the industry in a way that would not have been possible 10 or 15 years ago because of those big transformation drivers that I mentioned. And it's happening to every established incumbent and in every category. So these two charts represent um, I think really well visually what's happening in the industry. On the left, you see at the center all of P&G's core brands and all of these innovative companies that have come recently come into the market um, that are eating away at their market share and their dominance in those categories. And this is happening in every category. And just looking at a, a, a corollary example in food and beverage, you see the number of new companies, new brands that are entering the market in existing categories, but also in new and emerging categories that are being created as a result of these shifts in consumer preferences that are all driving significant net new opportunity in the industry. And that's fueling a massive wave of venture investment in consumer products. And this is not investment in technology, this is investment in consumer products brands. So since 2016, all the way through Q1 of 2020, we've seen $46 billion of venture capital investment flow into consumer products brands. Um, and what's really interesting is that there was a 36% increase in venture funding in Q1 2020 in the midst of the pandemic versus the same time period in 2019. So that just means that people are looking at some of the changes that are being fostered as a result of the situation that we're in and seeing significant opportunity. And in fact, they're forecasting that there will be more venture investment this year than there was last year, even in the midst of all of this uncertainty. And it's important to note that a lot of this investment is not necessarily coming from pure venture capital firms. It's actually coming from a lot of the leading companies in the consumer products industry themselves. Um, these, they're, you know, companies are investing in their own accelerator programs or they're investing in third party accelerator programs, sometimes doing both. They've got, in many cases, their own venture capital funds and they're investing both in what I would call R&D. So, uh, you know, new and innovative brands that are coming into the market that would be part of their investment umbrella, but also in corresponding technology. And because of this, this represents a really significant opportunity for us, given the relationship that we've developed with SAPIO and you know, the trends that we're seeing in the industry, for us to position the companies that, that you're gonna hear from today in the context of an innovation pipeline, back to a lot of those leading companies that you saw on the previous slide. And to position these companies and their capabilities in the context of these moments of opportunity. So, for example, you'll hear from Trend Demon today. They, you know, offer content and media consumption analytics, but the company's true value is really in mapping the journey that the consumer is taking as you engage with them to understand what are the most effective touch points and points that can make to influence the consumer's perception and their thinking as you engage with them. We move to experiences, you have a company like Hexa, which creates 
you know, beautiful 3D renderings of products to dramatically improve the consumer's experience in virtual environments. Or Sampler, which is curating physical product samples in a way that's designed to surprise and delight consumers as they experience these new products. Or a company like TV Page, which delivers a, a video um, uh, content platform, but really what they deliver is outcomes like style, like confidence, like self-expression. Or a company like SRP, which brings together consumers and traditional retailers uh, with small stores, with their consumer product suppliers in an ecosystem environment to help optimize the in-store experience. And then finally, in the context of speed, you know, we have a company like Picon, which, which automates data science to dramatically accelerate time to insight or IOLA, which delivers a virtual analyst platform that really speeds data-driven decision-making to help improve KPIs and performance. So this program has been fantastic and it's been great to engage with all of these startups and, and, and just to demonstrate how we as SAP are helping to facilitate innovation and aligning companies like these to the big challenges that we see in the consumer products industry today. So with that, I will hand it back to Stephanie to introduce the startups. Thank you, thank you so much, Mark. Um, that was wonderful. And now as we promised, we're really gonna take a deep dive. We're bringing these, this moments of opportunity framework to life and really showing you right now, as you meet our startups, how they fall into place and how they're really helping consumer products companies engage with the consumers, creating these moments of opportunity. So we're gonna go through the categories and take the deep dive. So we're starting really with experiences. And with that, we wanna start with Sampler. So we have Eric Davis here with us. Eric is the Chief Product Officer of Sampler. And a bit of background. So we know recent consumer research has shown that 61% of people expect brands to tailor experiences based on their preferences. And consumers are 40% more likely to spend more than planned when the experiences are highly personalized. So Eric, we would love to hear from you to know how does Sampler help consumer products companies create and deliver personalized experiences for consumers? Uh, hi, uh, so hi, I'm Eric. Um, so, um, uh, you know, in, in short, there's no personalization without data. And, and uh, you know, through the sampling process, we collect a lot of data. So, um, you know, if you could just uh, hit the, the first slide, uh, Stephanie, uh, just a little background on who we are and what we do. So, uh, you know, we are a marketing technology stack uh, for delivering uh, physical product samples digitally. Uh, we we uh, allow brands to target uh, and find consumers to trial their products. We do it across, um, you know, uh, seven key segments, including beauty, food, beverage, uh, household, all the fast moving consumer goods segments. Uh, and we're working with uh, over 400 brands today, including, uh, you know, many of which are, are existing SAP customers, uh, including folks like Henkel and others. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the process by which we, we collect product samples uh, involves, uh, you know, handing off a, a fair bit of data, which brands can then use to personalize. So if you look on the next slide at, at, the, um, uh, at the, the, the consumer journey, right? Uh, product sample really helps us, uh, you know, collect data throughout the process uh, of the consumers sort of uh, becoming aware and, and uh, understanding why a product may be relevant to them, uh, understanding how, uh, you know, to, to differentiate that product from other products, uh, you know, and, and ultimately become, uh, you know, an adopter of that product. And I think one of the key things here is, you know, capturing of CRM data, right? Uh, allowing brand, uh, consumers to, uh, to, to share their information uh, with brands so that they can use that to deliver more personalized experiences and, and turn, uh, you know, adopters into advocates for the products uh, and, and really earn their, their trust and their loyalty. Um, how we do that with SAP on the next slide, um, you know, is, uh, you know, we've integrated SAP uh, uh, CDC, the, uh, uh, the, the data cloud into, um, you know, two points in the sampling process. The first, uh, so on a sampling landing screen, uh, basically allowing consumers to, uh, to connect with an existing account in CDC. So what we're showing here uh, is, is a landing screen for uh, personal uh, uh, ProClean detergent, uh, you know, uh, uh, one, one of our customers. And, uh, you know, the, the goal is basically to allow them to use their 
existing data store uh, to identify a consumer. Once they've done that, we will then supplement that uh, the, the data set uh, within that consumer. So uh, we'll do pre-sampling diagnostics, allowing consumers to uh, self-report data uh, in order to match with free samples. We'll match them with free samples. We'll ship them free samples, uh, and then we'll uh, you know do follow-up activities to drive them to purchase. So follow-up coupons to drive conversion, uh, post-sampling surveys to collect reviews and syndicate them out, uh, and, and most critically, supplementing the existing data store uh, within SAP, getting that data back into the SAP CDC system so that um, you know, the, the brands can then use it to continue their dialogue and their relationship uh, with those consumers uh, to drive personalization across the experience. Uh, so I think that's my three minutes, but uh, I'll pass it back to you, Stephanie. That was incredibly precise, Eric. I have to say, big shout out. Thank you so much for that. Um, and again, everyone, we will send you contact information if you have questions or want to reach out to any of our startups. And moving on, also within this experiences element, we want to talk to Hexa. So we have Yechiel Atias here with us. Yechiel is the co-founder and CEO of Hexa. So Yechiel, I feel like we're just hanging out, having a casual <laughs> chat. Consumers today continue to prioritize value and convenience, but we know they want to be confident that they found the right product for them, their families, their homes, especially in certain categories like fashion and home furnishings. So what we want to know is how does Hexa help create an experience so con consumers do feel confident they're making the best purchasing decisions? And how does that translate to better results for the consumer products company? Right. Thanks, Steph. So, so basically how we look at it is that if you look at the uh, online decision or the, the visual online decision making process, it is broken, especially when you're comparing it to brick and mortar. Um, so uh, we all want those amazing images and, and product information, but it's just, it's just too expensive to scale um, or, or at least it was. So before, 3D and augmented reality, it was really hard to scale that personalized experience on a shopper level. Um, and uh, basically, this is exactly what we're solving. So uh, if you look at the example on, on the board now, you'll see that from just a, a, a one scene of a 3D asset, you can create multiple experience on a shopper level. Um, if you can uh, jump up to the next slide, Steph, please. So we all want that experience, but before we could give access to our customers to that amazing experience, we need to solve one small problem. The simple fact that today the, the process of creating 3D content it is manual, is time consuming, it's really expensive. So it's reserved only for professionals using very complex software. Now, this is well beyond the reach of many companies trying to access this space. Um, and it's literally uh, impossible to scale from, from th that physical location. Um, next slide, please. Um, so that's basically exactly what we're solving, right? So if you look again at the examples, all we need uh, is a couple of images, whatever they have, our customers have on their product page, uh, to be able to give that full immersive, immersive experience in multiple use cases. So our technology now is so advanced that we actually stop charging for the reconstruction process itself. We only charge when someone engages with that uh, 3D asset. So if you look at how the industry works today, it's uh, you have to pay so much upfront just to be able to experience with this type of, uh, of technology or content, uh, and we kind of solve that. Um, so uh, we packed all of that in a single line of code uh, which takes around two days to implement. Um, and, and that's simply, that's it. Um, the next time that our customers engage with that content, it's already in 3D on their website. Um, they use it for uh, increasing uh, uh, customer engagement, increasing sales, improving all sorts of metrics. So um, that's, that's basically uh, the usage, uh, sampling, so uh, all of that. Um, so basically, if, if you look at experience, it's broken, uh, you want to use augmented reality, you want to use 3D, uh, it's very hard, it's complicated, it's expensive to even experiment or build a business case 
uh, and we can solve all of that first layer uh, to enter and use this type of technology. Perfect. Oh, that was also wonderful timing. So thank you so, so much, Yechiel. Um, this is great. Oh, the timer keeps going. The timer keeps going, but we continue. So that was it with the experiences, and now we're moving into journeys. So when we're talking to journeys, we really want to be talking to trend demon. So today we have Avishai Sharon here with us. He's the co-founder and CEO, hi Avishai, of Trend Demon. <laughs> so we know that today reaching and engaging consumers requires a much deeper understanding of the consumer journey on the way to the outcome. This means identifying and understanding new and different channels where companies might meet consumers and the tools to measure the most effective channels and content for consumer engagement to improve segmentation, targeting, and overall consumer experience. So we know that today a lot of companies are trying to reevaluate or shift their digital strategy. And we're wondering how those companies could use Trendemon's platform to guide them with that new strategy and help them succeed. Awesome. Thanks, Steph. Um, so just a quick background and intro to, uh, to Trend Demon and, uh, and how we actually got started. So just a, big, uh, a quick context. Uh, before starting this company, I was actually a marketeer myself, helping companies create and promote their content. And one of my key challenges was how do I show my customers, brands, uh, and B2B companies that the work that we were doing was actually effective. So that was the reason to start the company. Uh, and this is what we do today. We work with a wide range of both B2B and B2C companies, all struggling with the same problem of how to understand how their investments in softer, kind of touchy-feely aspects like content actually impact business goals. And we do this through the prism of uh, customer journeys. Um, so if you can go to the next, uh, the next part, this is, this is the, the, the crux of the problem that companies still focus today on that last click on that last piece of journey before a business event happened in order to understand um, the effectiveness of their efforts. When in fact, what we're actually seeing is a much longer, much more complex journey that involves a lot of experiences along the way. So what we're seeing here is a visualization, but it actually shows the way that Trend Demon actually works. So we help companies map their journeys from initial touch points uh, throughout the engagement with their digital assets. It can be sponsored content, it can be uh, uh, direct uh, uh, engagement on the website, videos or content until they reach um, a business goal. Now, specifically with the case of SAP and, uh, and consumer brands, the business events happen within either the customer data platform, the customer data cloud, um, and that is how basically we can uh, provide deeper insights. Um, so if you go to the next, um, the next part, we talked uh, um, up until now about the importance of a customer experience. And we know that brands that can deliver a, a superior experiences um, are 5.7 times more, generate more revenue. Um, so that's the opportunity. But there are two big challenges that are stopping brands and accomplishing that. The first one is context. How do I know what is the right experience to offer? And the second part um, is how do I uh, get this information in a way that's compliant. Um, and I think these are the two main gaps that uh, Trend Demon together with SAP can solve. Um, and, uh, and Mark discussed the moments of opportunity. I think the opportunity for brands today exists um, not just to uh, uh, you know, bring more sales or to engage them, but to have dialogue with their customers and use um, the, uh, the challenge of compliance as a growth opportunity. So this is basically what we're doing. A quick example before I run out of time. So the next slide. So this is an example of one of our uh, customers that connects their customer identities with online experiences uh, through Trend Demon in order to offer personalized experiences on their site, create more moments of opportunity through consent, through compliance, and thus generating more sales. If you want to hear more um, and reach out, connect, um, feel free to use uh, the guys at the Foundry, reach out to us at Trend Demon. And thank you guys very much. Thank you, Avishai. 
So we already talked about experience, experiences, as well as journeys, and now we're moving into ecosystems. So for that, there's only one person we can talk to, and that is Gil Rabinovich, who is the co-founder and CEO of SRP. Hi, Gil. Hello, hello. <laughs> so we know that delivering an outcome in moments of need is about more than delivering just the product. It might require additional value add, such as content, services, or other complementary products. So in this environment, leading companies are competing as ecosystems, bringing together partners and providers and business networks. So this is really what SRP is all about. SRP has really created this new ecosystem for CPG companies, local grocery stores, and consumers. We really want to hear about the numbers. We really want to know how the SRP retail platform influences the bottom line, also for the CP companies and also for the local stores. Thank you, Stephanie. Great to be here and, and let's dive just into it. So SLP is all about creating a platform for CPGs, local grocery shops, and consumers to run all business tr transactions between them. If we move to the next slide, what we see is that we have actually built an ecosystem. This ecosystem, in, in this ecosystem, we have brought together partners and provider in a business network, equipped them with robust tools for business interactions like personalization, direct to, to consumer promotions, and much more. Let me give you a couple of examples of the, the value we actually created. So let's move to the next slide. And the consumer here at, at the bottom is now ordering products from their neighborhood store. SRB enables the CPG to build relationship with this consumer during the transaction or later in a super relevant context, from recommending to try a new yogurt, upselling on a cart, to participating in, in a tasting group of a new product. Or let's take a neighborhood grocery store that can add to its catalog products it doesn't really carry in the store. So the consumer can order products offered by a new by specialty store like fresh fish or bakery, and SAP will take care of the fulfillment to this store. These kinds of abilities were simply not there before we have created this ecosystem. As we collaborate with SAP, CPGs get access to a real-time actionable data relating to, the, to, to, to their customers and its consumers, like you know, automatic reorders of out-of-stock items, adding products to the store assortment, promotion, and so on, eventually optimizing the shelf space. We also extend the CPG dig digital core platform and conceptually have the stores and even the consumers work, on the, work with the relevant data of the CPG seamlessly, exposing the catalog, personalized, personalized promotions, automation of business processes, which starts with the consumer are all made possible using SLP. Think of the level of automation and insight CPGs are currently getting when they work with the large retailers chains. What SAP is doing, it, it brings these capabilities and much more to the private sectors, to those lo local grocery stores, which such tools, CPGs can really level the playing field. And obviously we see great results, double digit increase in revenues for CPGs and stores, 30% higher efficiencies and effectiveness of CPGs sales team and growing consumer loyalty. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gil. So we just covered ecosystems with SRP and now we're moving into speed. So the need for speed, there are a couple players here that we wanna to talk to and the first one is PCAN. We have Asher Geffen here, who is the Director of Business Development for PCAN. And the pace and complexity of business are accelerating exponentially. The companies that thrive are those that have the ability to sense and respond to market dynamics and consumer demand quickly and accurately. So we really want to know how does Pecan, Pecan help consumer products companies accelerate time to insight and time to response? Thanks a lot, Stephanie. <clears throat> Pecan basically enables companies to make better decisions makes, based on actionable AI-based predictions and do that very fast and a very simple process, empowering the analysts that are part of the business to create predictive models. And by that, maintaining flexibility, agility, knowing their customers better, and knowing the demand trends better, and to personalize their actions at a very agile and changing, ongoing changing pace. 
So basically what Pecan does is making, um, enabling companies to create predictions out of the abundance of data that there is. There's so much data within the company and without the, and from without the company, but it's very complex to actually create predictions on very specific questions of how do we create, uh, increase sales online and offline? How do we know better the customers? How do we uh, predict demand uh, trends now that they're changing? And that's basically what we do. We simplify the data, uh, the, the data collection, the data assortment, and, and the modeling up to a point where we have clear vision of what are, what are the predictions to these very specific answers, to specific uh, questions, and therefore uh, helping the business at, at its core. If you can move to the next slide, please. The challenge is basically taking all of the data sources that are within the company. So, and this is also where we work together very nicely with SAP of connecting to the CRMs, the ERPs, the data warehouses, and also enriching with data, data sets that can be useful for the use case that, that we're working with. And with the automation that we provide of the pre-processing of the data and the ease of the, um, of the use of creating the modeling itself, we create a very fast time to model and more importantly, time to insight on key predictions that the CPGs need to know their customers and to know their demand trends. And just a few examples. We can see um, we've been helping multinational CPGs, both on the customer retention side, also on the promotion side and increasing revenue and the cross-selling, and also on the expense side, making their supply chain a lot more effective, creating an ongoing demand forecasting per product, per branch, and optimizing uh, their, their supply. So basically, in a whole, we help companies create predictions and create uh, agility in order to increase their, um, their effectiveness of the business, uh, empowering the analysts to create predictive models in a very fast way. Perfect. And happy to be in touch with anyone who wants to know more. Yes. Hit up Asher. Thank you so much. And also, when we're talking about speed, we want to speak with Iola. So we have Erez Ranan here. He's the co-founder and CEO of Iola. Hi, Erez. Hi. Thank you, Stephanie. So again, in the same notion of the need for speed, companies need to have the ability to sense and respond to market dynamics and deliver with speed and agility to exceed consumer expectations. So Iola is doing something special and giving sales and marketing managers accessible analytics. So what are you allowing them to do today that they could not do before? Thank you. And um, Stephanie, exactly as you said, what matters to actually um, be able to improve business performance uh, these days is to connect uh, business managers, non-technical business managers to AI and data. And that's what we've done. Uh, we've built a platform that allows organizations to connect their business managers uh, with AI, with data, on demand, real time, um, and in the manager's uh, natural environment and in their natural language. Uh, and what we wanted to do is maybe to start with a 10 second uh, clip, just to- Let's get prime before. Send it to me before I want it. It's 2019, I'll make a decision before you mail me what I buy. Use artificial intelligence to substitute my own intelligence so I can live my life. So send me everything I want before I want it in as many boxes as possible. So uh, that's just to show how people, how consumers think today and how we uh, as organizations need to think about uh, serving some of our customers. Um, and so this is now what we've actually deployed and are deploying at our uh, clients. Um, uh, it's a platform, but it really feels like having an army of automated analysts. Uh, we do, and the platform does three things uh, really, really well and uniquely well. Uh, one, uh, it communicates with uh, non-technical managers through dialogue systems. So through, we work through Teams, through Slack, WhatsApp, email, anything that can allow us to have a natural conversation um, 
in natural business language with managers. Um, and, there, uh, and then we understand some of our patterns are on understanding what these managers want, what they're actually asking, and how it relates to the product ontology, to the business units, to the customers, to the products that we have, um, and what do we actually need to do for that. And then the second piece we do really well is we call upon a library of use cases, skills that we've developed. Some of them are advanced AI skills, advanced AI models that we've developed, but also we have the ability to add new analysis and allow customers, clients, organizations add new analysis within an hour. And once you add them, they're in production and they're ready to be consumed via dialogue, via Teams, Slack, WhatsApp, ever, anything else. The third thing is we connect to data, uh, of course, uh, seamlessly, uh, we're integrated with SAP, which we're really excited about. So we'll be available on SAP App Center, like Leo said. Um, and we, so we're connected to ERP, CRM. We also connect to external data, uh, data on competition. Um, and we gather organizational intelligence for you internally in terms of what managers are asking, what they need, what hypothesis they have, what constraints they have, and so on. Good. Next slide. I just wanted to finish with uh, just an example skill. As I said, we have many skills, but and also the ability to add new skills quickly. Uh, and this is uh, an example. This is a promotion optimization skill, which we're uh, proud of. Um, and it allows you to ask questions like, which categories of products should I prioritize for promotions where there's the most opportunity? What would happen if I do that? Uh, that could be a, a certain discount on a certain product or a brand in a certain region in a certain a period of time? Uh, what would be the implication on what would happen to other products? What would my competitors potentially do? What are some of the strategies that my competitors are using in promotions? Um, and what are they likely to do um, in the near future? Uh, that's it. Great. Thank you, so much. Thank you, Erez. Thank you so much. So we covered speed, and now there's one element left. It is the last, but it is definitely not the least. We're going to be talking about outcomes, and we're going to be talking to Alon Kedar, who's the co-founder and CEO of TB Page, coming to us from California. Hope it's sunny over there. So Alon, <laughs> hi Alon. So we know hello, hello. that. <laughs> We know that consumers today don't want to just buy the product. A lot of them are looking to achieve an outcome, whether it's health, wellness, security, or joy. They don't want to be sold to. They want to be guided, assisted, delighted, surprised. So we really want to know how TV Page helps consumer products companies orchestrate and deliver these high value outcomes, such as style or confidence, directly to consumers. Thank you, Stephanie. So, uh, you know, as Mark Osborne said, um, at the beginning uh, of, of this chat, the path to, to purchase is no longer linear. People are buying, uh, and you can move to the next slide, people are buying in, in so many different ways. Uh, our consumers are in so many apps at, at any given time. You know, I have uh, three teenage daughters who I can't even count really at this point how many apps uh, they're in at any moment in time. And if we as, as brands want to reach these, uh, these consumers, uh, we have to work through sellers. And, uh, and we use that term sellers, ambassadors, influencers, kind of interchangeably in today's world. And we're all familiar with the concept. Uh, but what we do is we actually bring these sellers into the e-commerce equation. Uh, so people can buy from people. You know, no one's going to respond to an ad today. People are going to want an expert's opinion. They're going to want uh, uh, to follow a recommendation. And so we create that, that structured path to all these consumers uh, through the, uh, the seller equation and, uh, uh, and make it scalable, measurable, uh, and, uh, and even commissionable. I can show you the next, uh, next slide here. Uh, we do this uh, primarily with many, many different tools, but primarily through, through video. Uh, video is the most effective uh, medium online, and we make video shoppable. Uh, one of our customers, Macy's, uh, here you can see, has um, their sales associate. Uh, her name is Michelle here on the screen. She happens to, uh, to uh, work out of the Macy's New York City store, uh, but she's also a digital ambassador on Macy's.com. And she has her own storefront uh, to which she posts content regularly on our app. And that she's posted hundreds of, of uh, videos and photos uh, through our 
our app and shares that directly to her social audiences, integrates you know, the, the content, brings it into uh, those audiences and, uh, and brings traffic directly into that uh, e-commerce experience. Uh, the experience is also discovered on, on search, on Google search. We find that uh, uh, we're averaging you know, multiple dollars per view, uh, doubling time on site, tripling conversion rates that, that uh, otherwise you know, don't have this kind of path or guided assisted uh, path to purchase and seeing tremendously higher order values. Uh, next slide, please, Stephanie. Uh, so uh, in terms of how it works, the, the workflow, the process is very tight on our platform. There's an app for the ambassador to simply post the content. You can see in step one here, uh, Michelle is posting directly to Macy's.com. So we illuminate you know, the e-commerce site with um, uh, these ambassador powered storefronts and shoppable video. And we have a, a, a plugin, an app coming out live on the SAP Commerce Cloud in a few weeks where any SAP uh, e-commerce uh, uh, brand can, can turn on these storefronts uh, it, at the click of a button. Uh, ambassadors, once they post to, uh, to the site, share directly on social, on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, you name it. Uh, the content is also uh, automatically discoverable on, on Google. And then all that data uh, is, is monitored and collected by us. And we're able to report uh, very clearly on the sales generated by the ambassador and commission the ambassador directly from the app. Um, that's it. Any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, thank you very much, Stephanie and everyone. Thank you, Alon. Wow, everyone, we did it. So first of all, our startups, you're amazing. This was awesome. And it's very exciting for us because we do feel like this is a very special group and that you're really bringing to life SAP's strategy and story. And we're so excited. This is just the beginning of the journey, so don't worry. Um, we will answer our phones tomorrow. I'm just kidding. We will continue working together. Um, we have so many people we want to thank, but just overall, in general, we have so many mentors and stakeholders within SAP, industry leaders, technical supporters, emotional supporters. Everyone, thank you so much. We could not have done this without you, for real. And we're going to take a group picture. I'm going to exit out, and if you feel inclined, please turn on your camera. But... I just want to let you know that applications are open for our next cohort, which is focused on utilities industry. So we're going to send the link um, in the chat and a follow-up email later on as well. Also for you to reach out to our startups. Also, if you're interested in applying for our utilities uh, cohort, or if you know anyone who's interested. So I will X out. Thank you everyone so much. Let's see if I know how to use Zoom after all these 291 calls that Lior talked about. Everyone can get together. If you have a glass of wine, if you moved over to the whiskey at this point, it's all good. We like it all. Smile. We're so happy you joined us. We're going to do a few screenshots because we have a nice crowd today. <laughs> everyone, I, oh, I love seeing your faces. Smile. Thank you everyone so, so much again. And we're excited to continue the conversation with all of you here, continue engaging with you. Talk to us and we hope to host you in Tel Aviv sometime soon. And we hope everyone stays safe and is well and stay strong. And that's it. Thank you Thank very you. much everyone.